hold and manipulate, but I managed to twice scribble my signature, even, much to my surprise, quite beautifully. I watched as the steaming bright red blood quickly darkened, congealed, and began to harden. Mr. M and the person known as Azazello produced hollow pins of their own, also drew blood, and tw signed twice their names with their own lovely penmanship. We waited until all three calli calligraphic signatures on each of the two sheets had dried. Good, very good, Ms. was Mr. M's judgment. He took the contracts, rolled them up, and tied each, then returned one to the drawer but handed the other over to me. Here, he said. Azazello remained silent, but placed upon the table before me a large glass that I first took for a no-nick, before peering more closely and finding it too ornate for that. A Belgian tulip, I wondered, noticing its stem. Large enough for a pint, it was hardly a no-nick. Mr. M. drew me from such thoughts, pointed to the shagat soul peculiar across the table, and prompted, reach then and freely taste. I fixed my gaze on the drink, reflecting that this proffered taste hadn't come quite so freely as I had initially anticipated, but to obtain an entire bottle for a few drops of blood was surely a good bargain and therefore a wise choice. So thinking, I reached across the table in that moment and plucked the oddly heavy bottle from where it invitingly sat. Intent now wholly on a taste and regarding nothing else, I poured the big glass full to the brim with the heavy, dark beer and took a sip. It had the kind of flavor that one could describe as full-bodied, but there was also a possible hint, strangely enough, of something eldritch and gamey, something redolent of goat, maybe satirical? Was that even a word? And where had I picked up eldritch? I sipped again. No, no gamey taste at all. I had been in error. The flavor was delightful, as if the brewed barley had come from a perfect garden of earthly delights. Whether the bottle was truly so good or merely fancied as such due to my thirst, I now drank greedily, without restraint, knowing not the drinking depth of that bottle, which easily filled the glass a second time full, again to the brim with this dark, strong beer. Downing it all, I poured another, and another, and another. Satiate at length, and heightened with the alcohol, jocund and boon, feeling as though all of nature were as trembling with intoxication as myself, I thought, ah, a virtuous drink. I now know what I earlier held in obscure infamy, defaming at a glance, Shagath's old peculiar, to be a blessing in disguise, for experience is the best teacher of wisdom in this as in all things. I recorked the bottle, still surprisingly heavy, and stumbled off up the steps, and out the front door, as if the way down had not been so far. Nor do I recall being accompanied by any of the three odd acquaintances I had met, though I must say that in my peculiar spirited state of mind, I was having difficulty keeping apart their faces, not to mention their names. As I made my way along the scenic, charming, and delightful old cobblestone streets of that odd part of town, I had only the bloody contract the weighty brown bottle, and my pleasing intoxication to remind me that I hadn't dreamt the entire affair. By the time I reached home, dusk was falling, and all the pleasure had worn off. In fact, my head was pounding, and a bad, vaguely gamey taste pervaded my mouth. I felt as though I had come down from a week-long drunk and awakened on a cold hillside with a hangover from an oppressive sleep encumbered by conscious dreams. My wife met me at the door, but said nothing, visibly annoyed at my late return. I mumbled some words about finding a beer to celebrate my alcoholic decision, feeling worn out from all the walking around on my quest and needing to hit the sack early for rest and recovery. I put the beer in our fridge, but hid the contract among my documents because I suspected that my wife wouldn't approve of what it stated. I fell into bed exhausted and was soon fast asleep. I'm sleeping. Be quiet. <laughs> there are some more uh, images. 
Now here you see in the next uh, slide. Uh, here you see the angry wife. She's very upset about this bottle of bottomless beer and showing her extreme anger about it. She doesn't trust it, and she is a little more sophisticated and clever and aware than the naive is. Um, so that's her. Uh, she might look like my wife. I'm not sure. <laughs> you can take a look and see if they resemble. The next picture, that's Koroviev, also known as Fagato, standing by a bus. And you see he's extraordinarily tall. Uh, he's taller than the bus. And the, the bus has stopped in this scene at uh, a place where there is no bus stop, actually. And if you look at the sign, you see it, that it says Erewhon, but that's backwards nowhere. So, bus stop nowhere. <clears throat> Next, we have Hella. She's the same uh, character you saw in the, one of the first scenes. Uh, her other name is Lilith, and she's approaching. She's supposed to be the most beautiful woman on earth. I don't know if she is, but but that's the idea. Um, she's uh, f sort of a friend of Koroviev. Koroviev is sitting there as well. You can see him. Uh, the next picture, we have Daniel Webster in his office. Daniel Webster is uh, was a real senator before the Civil War. He died in a, from a horse accident. Uh, there's a story about Daniel Webster. The title is The Devil and Daniel Webster. And Daniel Webster defends uh, someone in an earlier story who also traded his soul for, for something in return. Uh, and um, the naive, uh, the, the protagonist in my story, uh, somehow finds Daniel Webster to, doesn't know who he is, of course, but he finds the man, and goes by the name Dan Webster rather than Daniel Webster, and uh, takes him on as his lawyer to defend him and get him out of the contract. Finally, we have the courtroom scene. Um, that's with everybody, and there are a couple of new characters that you can see there. There's Beelzebub, who's the lawyer for Mr. M. Uh, he's the one with the horns, standing there in the blue suit. And then the judge, up in the judge's position, his name is Belial. You might be familiar with, Be with the names, not the entities. You might be familiar with the names Beelzebub and Belial, or, or not. They're demons or devils. Uh, so that's the story and the foreshadowing of things to come. Thank you, Dr. Hodges. Um, I really want beer. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, bottomless bottle. Of bottomless beer. bottle of beer would be better. We now have time for questions. Uh, feel free to ask in English or Korean. Any questions for Dr. Hodges? I have one. How long did it take for you to write this book? Well, initially it took two weeks. Um, for the, the story, it's basically uh, the same as the, in those two weeks, but I had to make a few changes. Uh, I gave it to my daughter to read, and she said, the climax isn't intense enough, and you have to add something. So I, I did. She was right. And then I, But the first person I read it to was a, a lawyer friend of mine, and I needed to check the, the courtroom scene. And he listened patiently to my nonsense, and he, he said, well, the, after I finished it, it's a good story, but the there are some problems with the courtroom scene, and some of the language has to be changed. So I got a lot of good uh, in advice from him on how lawyers actually speak and the terms they use. So uh, I suppose you could say it took several months to get it properly uh, formed, uh, but the, but it, it didn't change a lot after the first two weeks. So it took you two weeks to write that novel. Yeah, but I had a lot of beer. Oh, <laughs> that's the secret. Any other questions from the students? Uh, thank you, Professor, for the reading of the Bella. Um, I don't know if it is a very clever question, but um, 
why the, the motive, the motive, the deal with of the, the Arthur with the devil, devil is the, so why, so why do you, or what uh, leads you to bring it up at the present time? So it has been repeated and repeated, as you said, I had mentioned earlier in the early important meeting and the beginning of the meeting. So it has been repeated and repeated in Western religion. Also, your allusion to your Bible and mm -hmm. in the cultural scene, culture of, of the last year. You know, so, um, so why? So what? So what? What, 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 what is your really? What do you really want to talk, talk, talk of, uh, about? What, what comment on today's world by bringing uh, bringing about this kind of more people jam? That's my question. Thank you. Let me just check. I couldn't hear so clearly, but you mean why did I tell an old story again? So what aspects of contemporary, us, contemporary culture or society or the world in general so do you want to, to comment? Do you want to comment on by bringing, by revising this story? Mm -hmm. And why? Is, uh, and my on my another question has been actually it has been solved because uh, you have uh, during the reading because I was wondering why the beer, why the beer so it has some, some lep and some lepers so and so what do you mean by some reference to the German culture such as uh, Rathau, Rathaus, City Hall and the, the national holiday as and so in the, uh, some reference to um, Nazis, Nazis Germany and so it's because it has some Post, 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 um, yeah. post market, so big, and it has origin in Germany, and so, so that was I was wondering about that. Mm. So. Mm. Well, the, 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 there's one simple reason, and then there's some more complex reasons. The simplest reason is I wanted to warn people to avoid a bottomless bottle of beer because you, you're going to lose your soul. So don't listen to somebody who offers you one. But the the more uh, serious answer, I suppose, is that. I, I wanted to tell the story again and in a different way and draw upon not just Faust, but there are a lot of literary allusions and a lot of, a lot of things going on in the story. Uh, there, I draw upon Faust, obviously, but also Paradise Lost by John Milton. I draw upon the, uh, this novel by Mikhail Bul Bulgakov, a uh, Russian writer, Mikhail Bulgakov. Uh, he wrote a famous novel, The Master and Margarita, which was a reinterpretation of the Faust story. And the characters that I put into the story, uh, the names Koroviev, Hela, uh, Azazello, and Behemoth are all taken from demons in his novel. Mr. M is, is also Mr. The M is spelled M, but, but it's also supposed to be the initial M for Mephistopheles. And he's, but his name is Falland, and Falland is a variant of Woland, and Woland is the name of the chief devil of Satan that is in, in the story by Bulgakov. Um, there's also the story of the devil and Daniel Webster that I pull in, and uh, a lot of other things. There are just a lot of allusions. I wanted to, to write a kind of uh, self-consuming artifact, I guess. The, the it's kind of a postmodern novel that criti critiques postmodernism, and and uh, I guess you'd have to you'd have to read the rest of the story to to get that uh, that information. But it's also calling attention to the importance of knowing your tradition. Uh, the very last chapter, which is only a paragraph, uh, insists on the importance of of reading deeply into one's own literary tradition, one's own past and culture and civilization, uh, to understand oneself and, and everything, I suppose. But, the, but I guess the most important thing is that the story be fun to read, because if it's not fun to read, then it's not worth reading, really. Any, any other questions? We have time for one or two. Um, in your characterization of 
incarnation of the, the, the devil character. So, who, uh, what was your chief, uh, I mean, chief inspiration or any chief, the most important stories? Because uh, are there any difference from the previous models? Because in one of the renditions of recent post post movies, the Mephisto Palace was uh, transformed into a user, user, mm-hmm. the, the one who practice user, because. Uh, obviously, obviously, the film director have considers the the the, the allure, allure of, of the money is the really the most mm-hmm. is the most uh, yes most tempting uh, uh, nowadays. So he has transformed to that character. So how but how did you relate uh, that really, the character the character and who influenced you your thing? Uh, what, what, well, Mr. M, you're talking about Mr. M, the the chief devil in the story. Mr. M is is basically a combination of. Uh, Mephistopheles from Faust and the devil Satan in Paradise Lost because he he, he has a character that's much like uh, Mephistopheles but his, his his language his vocabulary is is much more like uh, like John Milton's Satan in Paradise Lost uh, the the beer you sort of asked about the beer why uh, well uh, I intended for various reasons, the word play on spirit is one of them. Um, but there's also a scene uh, that I wanted to recall from the Auerbach's Keller. Uh, in Germany, there, in, and in the story Faust, which I read when I was 20, 21, the, uh, there's a place where Faust and Mephistopheles go to drink, and Mephistopheles drills a hole in, in the table, and wine comes out, unlimited amounts of wine, and he, he gives everybody in the bar wine to drink, and it tastes great, but then it has a bad effect on them. Um, so I, I, that unlimited volume of wine that is associated with Mephistopheles became, in my story, the unlimited amount of beer from a bottomless